Welcome everyone. I'm here in Alpharetta, Georgia, and I'll be sharing our top 10 list of hot trends in green roof and green roll design, plus a look into 2015 for our virtual summit. I'm sure most of you know that our design editor, the wonderful Haven Kears, and I compile our yearly top 10 hot list together. And so is the case for 2014, our eighth year. But she's been under the weather for the last couple of weeks, and unfortunately Haven won't be joining me on screen so that we can present together as usual but she will be available online for a Q&A session over the live Social Weekend Hangout, and you'll be able to chat with her then. So how do we select our projects for the top 10 categories? We search the globe high and low from online blogs, news stories, and receive info from the architects and designers themselves, and we have a great time doing it. Our list is highly subjective and is really meant to tease and tantalize you with amazing, important, and inspirational green roof and green wall designs either built, on the boards, or simply visionary. Since it's still early into 2015, we haven't finished compiling our top 10 list for this year, so I'll be showing you a sneak peek into what we'll have in store for you at conferences in the fall. But before I get into the real thing, first I'm gonna show you a few projects that for some reason or another just couldn't make it into the top 10 for 2014. So what do we have here? It looks kind of like a vertical do-it-yourself green wall art project, right? Nope, it's a live moss carpet, a living bathroom rug that thrives from just a few drops of water that you leave behind when you step out of the shower or the bath. If they figure out a way to hang it, it just might be on the hot list for next year. How about these two rustic green roofs in the rugged mountain countryside of beautiful Norway? The baby green roof shed on the left is rather inspiring in its simple plantings, but I think it also inspires some major maintenance problems. Talk about nature taking back the built environment. All right then, back to the real top 10. Our number 10 category is client-specific boutique green roofs and green walls. This category is a perennial favorite of ours. Here we can let down our hair, throw out a rigid system of categorization, and simply highlight the projects that we think deserve to be seen. The Forum is a new turf top structure on beautiful Jeju Island in South Korea. The multi-purpose hall is submerged into the grounds of the upscale Nine Bridges Golf Course, and you can see the sloping structure is partially sunken to minimize blocking the views of that beautiful surrounding landscape. The cool part of this design is how they minimize the appearance of the building on the landscape by integrating these linear strips of stone seating as the sloping green roof seamlessly merges into the same grade as the parking lot. You may know that Copenhagen is completely flat, and there is no landscape for skiing or other alpine leisure activities. When big architects were designing the huge Amateur Resource Center, a waste to energy plant, they asked the question, how do you take the ultimate symbol of work, production, and pollution and turn it into something playful? By designing it as a mountain and integrating a park in it. They also wanted to clearly demonstrate transparency in its operation as a power station. Whenever one ton of fossil CO2 is released, the smokestack will actually puff smoke rings into the air. And of course, it also provides plenty of public activity space in all seasons. The creatively designed series of planter boxes installed at the Portland Expo Center shifts the stormwater management benefits of an eco-roof or rain garden to a vertical setting. The vertical freestanding structure is planted with Oregon natives, particularly from the Columbia River Gorge. The wall collects and filters rainwater running off a portion of the center's roof by piping it through a series of 12 aluminum troughs. The water flows by gravity through the different channels of the wall, eliminating the need for pumps. The designers intentionally created a system that can relatively easily be scaled down for smaller installations, or it can even be made larger. The developers in Colombia wanted a green showpiece show for Medellin in this very upscale neighborhood and created a 25-story green wall for the Edificio Green, literally the green building, reaching up to 300 feet high. The residents can lean over and look at the beautiful plants scaling the wall at rather dizzying heights. Very green and very high. The USA Pavilion at Expo Milano 2015 
has been designed by Biber Architects in response to the overall expo theme of food. Entitled American Food 2.0, United to Feed the Planet, it features an open, airy, barn-inspired structure, moving visitors through a series of exhibits to facilitate conversations about America's role in the global food system. A huge, harvestable vertical farm using a rainwater irrigation system and photovoltaic panels is highlighted along such typically American features like regional food trucks and an expansive boardwalk. Expo Milano 2015 is expected to attract more than 20 million visitors and will run from May through October 2015. Crowded and dense Mexico City has a strict ordinance prohibiting structures over eight stories. This creative entry from a design competition proposes the Earth Scraper, an underground glass skyscraper to solve the eight-story height restriction. The upside-down 65-story pyramid de digs deep down into the earth. The pyramid center is hollowed out so that every floor can have natural light and plenty of ventilation plus vegetation. The tubes are pedestrian walkways linking the structure together. Number 9. The Facebook Effect. The influence of online and social media. You just can't deny the power of the internet for creating like-minded communities and spreading the news online. We all know that Kickstarter is meant to help raise funds for enterprising people to start new projects like art, community, business, software, and in the case of startup Brooklyn Grange, it was used for rooftop farming. The rooftop farm number one at Standard Motor Products was financed via a combo of private equity, loans, grassroots fundraising, and Kickstarter.com. The rooftop farm now grows over 50,000 pounds of organically cultivated produce per year. It's just beautiful and bountiful. Here, Green Roofs for Healthy Cities used both Facebook and Pinterest in their 2013 Great Community Resiliency Project Contest. The idea with the most votes using a combination of likes and shares on Facebook and likes and repins on Pinterest won a delicate pass to the Cities Alive Conference in 2013. They had submissions from all over the globe, from France to Brazil, the U.S., and beyond. Here's the winner, the Integrated Green Roof Wastewater Recycling System. Art Prize is a yearly outdoor festival, actually the world's largest art competition, where the public votes determine the winner of a $200,000 prize. People register by phone app to vote for their favorites, or they can vote via texting or online. Time Magazine named Art Prize one of the five top favorite U.S. festivals. The beautiful Back to Eden Green Wall made it to the finalists. How can I not include GreenRoofs.com's own annual Love the Earth Plan a Roof or Wall photo contest? Just about every year we hold this photo contest to encourage readers to submit their favorite projects and be in the winning to win a whopping $100. Using Facebook, it's basically a popularity contest for our readers' favorite pictures of outstanding living roofs and walls. Last year, the winning green wall entry came from Israel with 729 votes. Indiegogo is an international crowdfunding site set up to encourage small businesses. Thousands Win is a New York startup who are increasing their green space by using the rooftop to set up a farm-to-bottle community-supported beer. By using rainwater collection systems and growing suspended vines, their roofs are one-third the weight of a traditional rooftop farm. Also from GreenRoofs.com, of course, is our Green Roofs and Walls of the World virtual summits, produced every other year. You know it's the epitome of using online and social media in our industry. These virtual conferences really enhance conference going on a global level with no expense of travel, lodging, carbon footprint, and so much more. Number 8. Treatment Facilities Cleaning Up with Green These leaders of industry are cleaning up our environments both inside and outside of the building. The Ellis Creek Water Recycling Facility treats about 5 million gallons of the community's wastewater each day and operates 24-7. The over 12,000 square feet of living roofs sporting 13 species of hardy succulents 
are irrigated from tertiary treated wastewater. In order to meet a net zero runoff requirement goal for the project, the living roof was integrated with a series of ground level bioswales and rain gardens. The green roof just looks so pretty with the grasses at ground level, don't you think? This treatment facility in France needed a way to hide the treatment basins from the local residents in order to gain approval for the facility's installation. The architect designed a multi-tiered metal roof on top of the high slope basins with green roofs on top. The vegetated roof structure allows the sewage treatment facility to be hidden and integrated into the neighborhood and local ecosystem. The slope goes from 20 to 60 percent. The beautiful Tri-City Wastewater Treatment in Oregon City uses a combination of physical, biological, and chemical treatment to clean approximately 8.4 million gallons of wastewater per day. Following the treatment process, clean water is released into the Willamette River. In Connecticut, this biomass treatment facility provides heating for the Hotchkiss School's campus buildings. The LEED Gold certified building, with its signature rolling roofs, is part of Hotchkiss's commitment to becoming a carbon neutral campus by 2020. Just gorgeous. The Glencourse water treatment replaced an aging system and delivers clearer, fresher drinking water to 450,000 customers across Edinburgh and the surrounding rural area. The project is highly sustainable and boasts Scotland's largest green roof, which undulates over the buildings and the water storage tanks, effectively creating a new hill for the countryside. Generating much of its own power needs through gravity hydro turbines, the building also encourages biodiversity throughout the surrounding drainage wetlands. The grasses on the roof merge seamlessly into the grasses at grade. Located six stories underground, the ongoing state-of-the-art Croton Water Treatment Plant will treat much of New York City's drinking supply from upstate reservoirs. The over nine-acre green roof will be the USA's largest, and it can be used as a driving range. The clubhouse and filtration pools will also create a security barrier for the facility. Number seven, green roofs with an edge or on an edge. The Edgeland House in Texas is owned by a science fiction writer who says he is enthralled with 21st century human habitation in urban frontiers of abandoned industrial zones. I think you can really see the influence here. The design is also inspired by the vernacular of the pit house, one of the oldest housing typology in North America used by Native Americans. Over 40 native species of wildflowers and grasses were introduced to preserve the local ecosystem. This mixed-use town center in the Swedish county of Holland is really pushing the edges here. Bisected by a pedestrian promenade, the development consists of two angled L-shaped buildings that resemble open butterfly wings covered in vegetation. Designed to look like an extension of the neighboring park, Butterfly Square is pedestrian friendly and child friendly, and solar panels were embedded in the green roofed butterfly wings. The sharply angled green roof hides underground parking. Here we have a rather minimal aesthetic in the Spanish countryside of Vitura. The visual impact of the housing is reduced by placing it below the access level into the side, with a piece strongly cantilevered and covered with cool green lawn. The home also employs the use of renewable energy, biomass, and water saving measures, which greatly reduce energy consumption. The green roofed Tula House in British Columbia is set deeply into the craggy coastline of Quadra Island. The contemporary single family home extends 44 feet above the Pacific Ocean, allowing for stunning views. Dramatic asymmetrical edges and disorderly spatial organization are meant to reflect the island's many rock ledges and rough terrain. The Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts High Park Pavilion is a marvel of engineering with its hyperbolic paraboloid roof. The highly popular 10,000 square foot green roof doubles as a campus lawn for the public. Due to the varying pitches, a new steep slope product and assembly for this type of green roof was developed, Gardnet 
which provides the appropriate measures to cope with the sheer forces and growing media retention. Elegantly simple. Number six, celebrate the academics and world culture progressives. These high and low tech solutions inspire us all. Using London's BT Tower for this concept, a master's student wanted to demonstrate how the exterior structure of a skyscraper could feature an eco-catalytic converter to capture the carbon emitted in the form of gas fumes and then convert it into natural gas using water and sunlight. Lee's concept showcased the BT Tower from its current use as a telecommunications hub and has turned it into an eco-skyscraper. Here's a different type of living wall. The biophotovoltaic panel planted with moss, is a prototype designed at the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia to produce energy from bacteria in soil using a battery. The self-producing energy system uses bacteria that is fed through byproducts of plants, converting it to power appliances and electrical devices. Very cool and very high-tech. The Kuwait University Teaching School understands that learning extends beyond class-based instruction and includes a robust program of direct hands-on engagement, both at grade and atop the school's 350 square feet of landscaped roofs. Used by both students and teachers, these external learning environments include laboratories, gardens, observatories, and play spaces to teach children to be good stewards of the land in ways that can't be duplicated in conventional educational settings. What a thoughtful and enlightened place to learn. Designed for LEED Gold Certification, the National Center for Civil and Human Rights here in Atlanta incorporates a high-performance exterior wall assembly, state-of-the-art environmental control systems, several energy-saving features, and a green roof. Located in the heart of downtown Atlanta, the 42,000-square-foot facility is expected to host 400,000 visitors annually. With multiple interior and exterior gathering places, the center provides spaces for visitors to congregate and encourages exploration and a natural flow of people into, through, and around the entire site. The multi-component King Abdulaziz Center for World Culture Facility is characterized by its functionality, innovative approach, and iconic design. Inspired by Saudi Arabia's geology and rock formations that preserve petroleum energy, covered by a massive living roof. The facility's groundbreaking exterior is a facade consisting of stainless steel tubes that are intricately and individually formed and bent and then wrapped around the building. The multi-level center integrates diverse cultural programming with an auditorium, cinema, library, exhibition hall, museum, and archive. Number five, sculptural architecture. I think you'll know what to expect here. The name says it all. Designed to mimic the rolling hills of Tennessee, the LEED Gold Certified Nashville Music City Center has three independent green roof sections with undulating surfaces. With pitches ranging from 16 to 25 percent, the project required slope stabilization of the media. A 360,000 gallon rainwater collection tank stores rainwater from the roof, which is used to irrigate outdoor landscaping and flush the hundreds of toilets in the building. How about this truly stunning shot of the U.S. Navy's Blue Angels flying over the Nashville Music City Center? Very cool. The Flavors Orchard in southwest China offers over 45 energy-efficient villas. Each Mobius villa forms an endless ribbon articulated around two patios. All have self-managed food gardens. Look how cool it looks in plan view. This highly sculptural design also integrates PV panels within the middle of the green roofs. Clearly, this project could have been in the green roofs with an edge category, but its multifaceted facades just screamed sculpture here. The project at Phoenix Valley is a government-funded and operated theater, film, and art center. A courtyard canal was drawn into the site, becoming the active element that has carved out the valley from a green-roofed mountain mass chock full of building integrated photovoltaics. This open courtyard creates access to all parts of the center from within. 
It achieved certification of the maximum three stars available under the China three-star rating, which is the equivalent of lead gold. Sejong City in South Korea is a 667-acre plan that weaves a network of green spaces dictated by the contours of the land, which was once hilly but was flattened out in order to make way for as many as 500,000 new inhabitants. The six-story height limit within the city center allows the structure's green roofs to slope down gracefully to the ground in an easy, pedestrian-friendly incline. Design Bal Balmori and Associates don't miss our keynote from Diana Balmori herself to learn much more about this massive and important project. Number four, meditation stations, sustainable, relaxing, and socializing. Can you say green and awe? In a densely populated neighborhood in Saragossa, Spain, a small corner site was transformed into a vegetated vertical square on Delicia Street, a pedestrian artery and undoubtedly the vital center of the neighborhood. The hanging gardens consist of 14,000 square feet of greenery offering a botanical root of 84 different plant species. Inspired by the idea of a neighborhood tree, the routes crisscross the height of the plaza's space as if they were tree branches sprouting out from the trunk. Plaza Delicias is truly enjoyed by all. Well, here's what happens when you combine creativity, ecological design, and a $55 million budget. Designed for a private client in Morocco, Red Moon is a sprawling presidential rest houses complex. Incorporating multiple features of sustainability, including green roofs and partially earth-sheltered spaces, the complex has a surface area of about 10,000 square meters. A pretty awesome presidential escape, wouldn't you say? House C in Japan is a single-family home where the owners see it as an extension of gardening, just on the roof. Located between the ocean and mountains, the owners live in a high-rise condominium in Tokyo and needed a getaway to be close with nature. I met the owner-developer of the Forest Lodge Eco House in Sydney last year and was very impressed with his enthusiasm and knowledge of sustainable design. He wanted a home to reflect this, and the vacant lot was one of the last original lots in the city to have never been built on. As a result, the City of Sydney Council encouraged a contemporary design that would be distinctly 21st century. They achieved this with rooftop solar tubes, rainwater harvesting, 7-meter high vertical gardens, and a green roof. The project has won numerous awards, including the Green Smart 2014 Australian Home of the Year. Number three, the Green Apple, New York City. New York has been leading the way in living architecture for years now. Here are just a few of the many, many great projects. New York City has thousands of square feet of green roofs, and it would be impossible to highlight many of them. Here are just a few, including the Cook Plus Fox headquarters, the Queens Botanical Gardens, the USPS Morgan Processing and Distribution Center, and the Jacob K. Javits Convention Center. Here we have the Via Verde, the Green Way, situated in the heart of the South Bronx. A model of green living at its best, Via Verde has 66 kilowatt BIPVs, on-site cogeneration, green roofs, community vegetable gardens, rainwater harvesting, and drought-tolerant vegetation. 40,000 square feet of green roofs, Adorn the lead gold for new construction certified inner city housing development with numerous public spaces for promoting community. With a variety of different types of residential units, Via Verde is truly a healthy model for the future. Did you know the iconic Empire State Building, certified lead gold for existing buildings, currently has four green roofs totaling about 9,100 square feet? Due to their high rise positions, Varying sun orientations and necessity for low maintenance, different pre-vegetated sedum mats were chosen. For example, on the very shaded 25th floor, a sedum moss system was used. But more sunny areas are able to enjoy a greater variety of sedums. Now here's a really unique project. The City of New York's Five Borough Administrative Building on Randalls Island has been a working laboratory for green roof design and construction 
since 2007, with 25 systems and covering over 29,000 square feet. The five borough green roof has modular systems, built in place systems, vegetable gardens, solar panels, raised planter beds, hydroponics, pre-vegetated sedum mats, and even beehives. Keep up the great work. What a gorgeous green wall. Located in a private Manhattan business, this living wall is situated in the building's 23-story atrium and the living tapestry used close to 12,000 plants. Situated as the focal point of the meeting space, the system uses 12 distinct irrigation zones over its almost 2,000 square feet. It's hard to not keep using the term iconic with some of these projects, but the High Line has quickly established itself as synonymous with reuse and New York City. The formerly abandoned railroad viaduct was ingeniously repurposed in three stages as the extremely popular, now iconic, 1.5 mile long elevated linear park. The vegetation varies greatly throughout the seasons, but is always thoughtful and well designed. Phase 3 opened last September and extends the High Line from the previous terminus above West 30th Street around the far west side of the Hudson Yards. The 10th Avenue Spur, or simply called the Spur, is named for its former role as a nexus to the Morgan Processing and Distribution Center seen earlier. The Spur is a lushly planted amphitheater hovering over West 34th Street with plenty of seating. The 10th Avenue Spur is currently inaccessible and will remain closed until construction of 10 Hudson Yards. If you've not had an opportunity to do so yet, I highly recommend you read the 14-part series on greenroofs.com, a comparison of the three phases of the High Line, New York City, a landscape architect and photographer's perspective by your landscape editor, Stephen Cantor. Number two, the influence of architects and designers taking a leadership role in design. Safdie, Blanc, and Calibo. Be prepared to see some amazing visionary work. Moshe Safdie, founder of Moshe Safdie Architects, has been creating green architecture for almost 50 years, saying that the vogue for skyscrapers and the privatization of public space is creating cities that are not worthy of our civilization. Here we see Habitat 67, his groundbreaking experimental modular housing in Montreal using 15 different housing types, all with roof gardens. The elliptical nine-story Vancouver Public Library is also an early green roof example here in North America. Noted landscape architect Cornelia Oberlander worked with Softy in its design. Native ground covers were planted to represent the local Fraser River along with large trees and it has fared just beautifully. The Marina Bay Sands Integrated Resort is the world's most expensive standalone casino and integrated resort hotel. It's also an engineering marvel at 650 feet high with 55 floors and the striking 65 meter cantilevered 12,400 square meter sky park with a capacity to hold 3,900 people. We were there in 2010 and it was amazing replete with a public observation deck, scores of trees, lush vegetation, spas, and the world's highest infinity edge, 150 meter pool overlooking magnificent Marina Bay. Here's a section. Wow, what a spectacular view. Sky Habitat is a high rise apartment in Singapore, but in many ways also a house. Each unit boasts a private garden or outdoor space that opens up to the sky. Just look at the programming for its sky bridges, with alleys and walkways linking the community of homes on several levels in the sky. Chongqing Cho Tianmen offers 10 million square feet of mixed-use property. To honor its previous use, the center is divided into six outward north-facing towers in the shape of sails upon the water a modern representation of a fleet of ancient Chinese ships. The five levels of public programs are located underneath, with the amphitheater gardens and a park at podium level. Also in China, 
The Golden Dream Bay is a high-end, high-density residential beachfront development with private and public sky gardens. Green roofs are located on the parking deck, the 15th and 30th floors, and on private stacked units. Terracing is maximized to allow for sea view terraces at about 50% of the units. Here we're spotlighting a true innovator. Dr. Patrick Blanc has been a researcher for the French National Center for Scientific Research for 30 years, but is best known for his stunning hydroponic vertical gardens, having constructed over 300 throughout the world. This is the Musée du Quai Branly in Paris, facing the River Seine. With biodiversity in mind, Patrick used species from North America, Europe, the Himalayas, China, Japan, Korea, Chile, and South Africa. Aren't these luscious plants wonderful? Artfully placed within the luxury Siam Paragon Shopping Center, Patrick wanted the plant strips, or hanging fences, to recall mighty epiphyte-covered branches of tropical trees, so he opted for species that would stream down one or two yards. In addition, individual vertical green panels rise out of the central fountain and welcome shoppers at the mall entrance. The Pérez Art Museum Miami was designed to engage visitors to the new museum and Patrick's design comprises clusters of 67 columns of vegetation with lush plants and flowers that stretch up to the building's overhanging roof. Challenged by climatic conditions associated with Pam's Oceanside location, Blanc designed long plant-wrapped cylinders of almost 55,000 plants encompassing 80 different species. The new five-story wall, the Oasis of Abacur, was constructed in Paris on the side of a previously blank residential building as a hymn to biodiversity. 25 meters high, the diagonal waves highlight 236 different kinds of plants. Ibiza is known as one of the major party cities of the world, and the life marina, Las Boas, seems ready to embrace the more chill side, but in high ecological style. Multicolored spiral, or boa, undulating iron gabion cages encase tropical plants in this luxury condo development. And these are real photos, by the way. Now we highlight the work of Vincent Calibo and Vincent Calibo Architecture, a visionary design architect known for his fantastic eco-utopian designs. Shown here is the lily pad, a concept for a completely self-sufficient zero emission floating city intended to provide shelter for up to 50,000 future climate change refugees. The Coral Reef Project was targeted for disaster relief in Haiti, aiming to build a three-dimensional and energy self-sufficient village from one type of standardized prefabricated module. Inspired from a coral reef with fluid and organic shapes, the two waves undulate on an artificial pier. The Thessalia was designed to navigate the rivers between the Danube and Volga, Rhine and Guadalquivir, or the Euphrates and Tiger. The hydraulic network in its double hill filters the fluvial water and purifies itself via the planted roof. And the double pneumatic membrane is equipped with smooth photovoltaic solar cells. Covering a surface area of 350,000 meters, the 132 floors of the Dragonfly is meant to be a metabolic farm for urban farming. The 600 meter high vertical farm is based on the wings of a dragonfly. The organic exostructure integrates renewable solar and wind energies. Dragonfly is a true living organism being self-sufficient in water, energy, and biofertilizing. The proposed bionic arch is said to respect the environment and give a new symbiotic ecosystem for the biodiversity of Taiwan by eliminating smog with living walls. Each floor has suspended sky gardens inside and out. Other ecological features include solar and wind power, bioreactors for water purification, recycling, and eliminating waste. Aiming for lead gold, the gate residence in Cairo is set to be a combination of trees and building and metamorphosing the city into a vertical, green, dense, and hyper-connected ecosystem. 
The gate residence's roof will encompass a big community garden, common playground, orchards, and infinity swimming pools, all linked by sky footbridges. And you can see that the inventive curtain wall is punctuated throughout with green walls. And in our number one spot is Vertical Garden Towers and Cities, Biophilia Meets Avant-Garde Architecture. As our population continues to rise, so do our buildings. And here are some really spectacular ones. Designed by Pelly Clark Pelly Architects, Jingui Li is a major component that is becoming a new center for Wuxi, a city of more than 4 million people in southeast China. Envisioned as a model for sustainable, livable cities, Jingui Li will be primarily residential, and the six neighborhoods will have an emphasis on outdoor public spaces and sky gardens with park views. The retail center will have a lushly planted 4.5 hectare rooftop garden with walking paths and fine dining. The white tree mimics a tree, reshaping itself to grow into its environment, yet simultaneously enhancing it by offering much needed shade. L'Arbre Blanc engages residents to both Montpellier's outside environment and the sunshine itself. It's pretty in a very pristine and geometric way. This is the 50 meter high M6 B2 Tower of Biodiversity, or the Vertical Chameleon, with facades of titanium cladding covered with plants from wild areas. It's a tool for seeding, allowing the wind to spread Class 1 purebred seeds into the urban environment. And its height is a key element for its capacity to regenerate urban biodiversity. Benefiting from an exception to the 37 meter building height restriction in Paris, the tallest building here is 50 meters tall. It will add much needed greenery to the Parisian skyline. The green vegetal facade of the tower extends over the center of the block to the surrounding buildings. Appearing as a twisted green mountain in the city of Taipei, the Agora Garden Tower, as its name indicates, is directly inspired by the twining structure in DNA's double helix. Topped with a photovoltaic pergola, it has 20 inhabited levels of a cultivated vertical farm with suspended orchards, organic vegetables, aromatic, and other medicinal gardens. Agora Garden is a unique ecological landmark, a new symbol of sustainability. A continuous banister welcomes more than 230 cars and 500 scooters in the garage, with living walls, of course. The Agora Garden is a cascade of suspended gardens in the city. Central Park in Sydney is a spectacular $2 billion, 5.8 hectare mixed-use urban village. Designed by Jean Nouvel, PTW Architects, and Patrick Blanc, the complex has the highest vertical gardens in the world at 150 meters high. Its 64,000 square meters of vegetation translates to 1,200 square meters of green walls plus 7 kilometers of planters with trellises. One central park also has a very unique cantilevered heliostat with 320 reflectors 100 meters high with the sky garden above. Just look at more of these numbers. We were given a tour here by Patrick last October at the Sydney World Green Infrastructure Congress and I will tell you that I was simply floored. The building manager brought us up to the Sky Garden on the 28th floor, and it was amazing. The heliostat was designed to reflect light down throughout the public shopping and park space below. It offers distinctive LED light shows at night. The Five Green Star Central Park is set to become an icon of 21st century living. So that's it for 2014. Here are just a few examples of some simply stellar projects that Haven and I will be highlighting in 2015. I'll start first with Zorlu Center, a landmark mixed-use project at the European Crossing Point with wide public spaces and grand-scale buildings. Green spaces cover more than 72,000 square meters, including 200 plant species with 68 different types of trees. Offering an unequal living space at the heart of Istanbul, the mega shopping mall complex 
hosts a series of very large terraced green roofs in the form of gardens, offering visitors views over the Bosphorus and the city. Google's new campus in Mountain View has large translucent canopies to cover each site, controlling climate inside, yet letting in light and air with trees, landscaping, cafes, and bike paths weaving throughout. Tons of areas for relaxation and recreation abound, plus many green spaces are meant to rethink the notion of office space. Following the Climate Energy Plan of Paris, aimed at reducing 75% of greenhouse gas emissions within 2050, the R&D project from Calibo Architecture encompasses eight different plus energy and or energetically connected high-rise building prototypes spiraling with vegetation. Designed for a sustainable, dense, and connected city, positive energy towers are eco-conceived to fight global warming. Phase 1 of William McDonough and Partners' innovative eco-effective factories at Hero Motor Corp. demonstrate octa generation to capture or generate eight things, electrical energy, heating, cooling, water from the air, carbon dioxide for rooftop greenhouses, food, jobs on the roof, and air quality for people working in the building. It's an all-in-one green manufacturing plant producing auto parts, food, and energy. With bio walls, a vegetative roof, and greenhouses, every possible architectural fabric and space has been penetrated with vegetation to create serene, energy-effective, and healthy working environments while producing food, which supplies the factory canteen, and the surplus goes to the community. The Kuka Center in India will open this summer. And finally, I'll leave you with the public housing development, Casa Clementi, in Singapore. The government is committed to providing a better living environment for Singaporeans by creating well-designed, sustainable, and community-centric towns. With 10 high-rise residential blocks of 2,234 dwelling units, its main design feature is a large landscaped environmental deck returning greenery back to the urban setting while concealing the basement car park underneath. The roof garden occupies 15,460 square meters, or just over 27% of the site area, of which 7,460 square meters, or almost 50%, is devoted to planters. Singapore continues as a leader and a source of inspiration to us all in the realm of living architecture. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our top 10, and you know that we're always looking for feedback. Please send us those projects that you believe are cool or noteworthy. You never know, one of your projects just may make it into our next top 10 list. I hope you'll enjoy all the rest of the other videos during our virtual summit. Bye for now.